Welcome to Worry Bites, friend, where I share bite-sized messages that bring big-time changes to you. And I am Wumi Ademola. Do not quench the spirit. That was a stern warning that Apostle Paul gave the Thessalonian Christians, and God is giving us that same warning today. Do not quench the spirit of God. First Thessalonians chapter 5, the Bible says in verse 19, Do not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. You see, friend, God in his graciousness and benevolent heart, he gave us his Holy Spirit to help us in the journey of life, to guide us, to help us. However, if you want the Holy Spirit to help you as God intends, there are three things you absolutely must never ever do. Because if you do any one of them, even one, you're going to quench the Holy Spirit and you're going to hinder him from guiding you and working in your life. So let's get right into it today. Three things that you must not do so that the Holy Spirit is not quenched in your life. Number one, do not despise or reject God's word. That's the first thing. Now the next verse, verse 20 of First Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, do not scorn or reject God's gifts of prophecy or prophecies, spoken revelations, words of instructions or exhortation or warning. Now, if you disregard, despise, scorn, treat as unimportant God's word, God's prophetic word, or God's warning to you, the Bible says you risk quenching the move of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because to reject God's word is to reject the Holy Spirit who incidentally is also the author of God's word. He is the inspiration behind the Holy Bible and every prophetic word of God that you hear today. The Bible says in 2 Peter 1 21, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God, they spoke as they were moved by the spirit of God. So if you reject, despise, treat as unimportant what the Holy Spirit spoke, you are indirectly rejecting the Holy Spirit and you are quenching him, you are subduing him, instead of being responsive to him, you are stifling him. So please do not do this. When you receive a word of prophecy and you know that it is backed by the word of God, treat it as important. Do not disregard it. Do not scorn it because it is a word from the Holy Spirit. Number two, if you want the Holy Spirit to move in your life as God intends and to help you and to guide you, you must not disobey his voice. That's the second thing. Do not disobey his voice. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 23, and I'm going to read verse 20 and 21. God was speaking here. He said, behold, I send an angel. And you need to know in most Bible translations, the word angel is in capital letters, so is, is, in, is in uppercase. And that means it's not an ordinary angel, but it's actually the spirit of God. The uh, Hebrew word for angel means spirit. And when it is in capital, it begins with the, the first letter is, put, is set in caps. That you need to know is just not any ordinary spirit. It is actually the spirit of God. So this verse could actually uh, mean, behold, I send my spirit before you. And which kind of tie in with Romans 8, 14, that says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. So God here says, behold, I send an angel, which is my spirit before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. And then God said, beware of him. Look at it there. If you're reading it in your Bible, him is in capital H. So that tells you again that this is no ordinary angel. This is actually the spirit of God. So God says, beware of him. Beware of my spirit. Obey the voice of my spirit. Do not provoke him for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him. So if you want uh, not to, if you want the Holy Spirit to guide you and help you and not to quench him, you must obey his voice. 
you must follow his lead. You need to know that the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. He will never force his way on you. He will never lead you unless you allow him. Like Romans 8, 14 says, unless you allow him to lead you. The more you allow him to lead you in life, the more he's able to work in your life to do everything God wants to do in your life for you. But the more you um, disobey him and you don't respond to his, his leading, you don't obey his voice, then he is not able to take you where you need to be. And sadly, this was what happened to the ancient Israelites. You know, God was talking to the Israelites in Exodus chapter 23 that I just read and says, for you to get into the promised land, you need my spirit's uh, guidance. You need my spirit to lead you. But unfortunately, these folks, due to their repeated disobedience, they quenched the Holy Spirit. They did not allow him to lead them into the promised land. And eventually, unfortunately, they all died in the wilderness. And so that's what happened. The Holy Spirit cannot help you. You quench him if you're disobedient to his voice. But when you obey his voice, he can take you to wherever uh, he can take you to wherever God has revealed to you in your heart that God wants to take you to. He'll take you to your promised land. So don't disobey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Last but not the least, oh, don't qu do not do this if you want the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Don't complain against God. That's another thing that quenches the Holy Spirit of God. And sadly, again, that was another thing that the Israelites did. They were professional complainers. They complained about everything and about anything. And ultimately, they quenched the Holy Spirit and prevented him from taking them into the promised land as God had intended. The Bible says in, verse, in Numbers chapter 14, verse 29, God said concerning them, he said, the carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness, all of you. So when somebody keeps complaining against God, the Bible says that action quenches the Holy Spirit who is meant to lead them, who is meant to work out God's purpose in their life. And that's what happened. These folks quenched the Holy Spirit through their constant complaining. If you want the Holy Spirit to keep moving in your life and guide you into your promised land, you must make up your mind. No matter what, you will never complain against God, but you will always give God praise and thanks. And that's why you're going to notice in 1 Thessalonians 5, the, our text, which we've been reading uh, in this, in this um, video, uh, the, the previous test before verse 19 that says do not quench the spirit verse 18 now says in every situation no matter what the circumstances be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus so it kind of flows first it says in verse 18 first Thessalonians 5 18 it says in everything no matter the circumstance give thanks and then the next verse says do not quench your spirit so your ability to keep giving God thanks is what will prevent the spirit from being quenched in your life a lifestyle of continuous thanksgiving, worship, and praise will keep you in the constant flow of the Holy Spirit in your life. Ephesians 5, 18, we're told, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be ever filled, ever stimulated with the Holy Spirit. How? Speaking out to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise with voices and instruments and making melody with all your heart to the Lord at all times and for everything giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father that's how you stay full of the Holy Spirit that's how you keep him moving in your life working in your life guiding you helping you and doing for you all that Father God wants him to do so again I tell you by the Lord do not quench the Holy Spirit do not disregard his word, do not disobey his voice, and don't you ever complain against God. I do trust you were blessed today. If you've not done so, subscribe to my channel, In God Media, follow all my social media handles, and see you next time, friend, for another awesome word by video. God bless.